Hello, everybody. Dave Neal here. Happy Monday. Listen, I had no intention of making this video you are watching right now, but it is so dang interesting. This, uh, uh, I'm going to break down a few clips from Jason Tartik's podcast, which is called Trading Secrets. Now, Jason, he's, uh, you know, knows a lot about the business world and finances, and of course, just got engaged to Caitlin Bristow, uh, big Bachelor Nation couple. This is way more interesting to me than any of the behind-the-scenes drama that we're getting from the actual show itself. Uh, he talks to Dean Unglert about uh, different uh, uh, finances, how much they got paid for Bachelor in Paradise, how much he got offered for Bachelor. Um, if you guys stick around to the end of this video, the final clip I'm going to show is the Nikon brand deal that Dean was offered, um, network deals, and also how much money he and Colton Underwood were offered to be the next Bachelor. This is really fascinating. Fascinating stuff. It's all about the influencer life and the behind the scenes stuff. Nobody talks about this because of fear of like, no, you know, there's, you know, it's like corporations. They don't, they don't ever want people to mention how much money they're making or contracts. You know, in Hollywood, people are finding out that one actress is making one tenth of what one actor is making, even if they have the same agent. There's all these scenarios in which where people are learning that you can make the most money by having a transparency with your peers over what you're being offered versus what someone else is being offered. Anyway, let's jump right into it. I suggest everyone goes and watches the full episode when we're done here, but I will play three or four clips about Dean and Jason's finances. Very fascinating stuff. Very fascinating stuff. So let's jump right in and pick up. And the first clip is uh, Dean talking about what it costs to live out of a van. And then I'm going to talk about the network deals, his Nikon deal, which is, a, it's good money. But, you know, and people, real quick, in the comments say, oh, it must be nice for one hour of work. You can do so-and-so. It's about building equity. And we can all learn from this because we all have our own life where we build equity. The more subscribers someone has, the more uh, the more you know ownership you have over whatever product Product or service you offer, the more you're worth. So rather than renting out your time and making money for someone else, it's a good example to get your side hustle going and make your own money. That's the world we live in. All right, let's play this right now. I, I appreciate this podcast because you're right. I think that it is like taboo to talk about finances. Um, mm -hmm. Taboo. For whatever freaking reason. And I think that one of the biggest reasons for it is like it kind of like gives the financial institutions the control and like it exactly. gives the, the employers the control and all that kind of stuff. 100%. So I actually, I started a travel blog outlining all of the expenses of things like flights, uh, hotels, food. Like if you want to go to Egypt, jump on there and see how much it costs me to go to Egypt. And I, I have a similar post for my van. Cool. Um, the van itself was obviously the biz biggest expense. The van itself cost me, it was like just, just over $27,000. I personally have a, a, a bad financial history up until a few years ago. So I had to pay for it in cash, which was a, a big bummer. It, you know, it took a big hit there. Um, and then after that, I probably put like another $20,000 worth of upgrades into it with like solar and um, uh, a bunch of other stuff that I can't remember, like a roof rack, like a bunch of, you know, like refrigerator sink, like all that kind of stuff added up to about 20 grand. And then the day to day, man, the day to day is not bad. It's, it's basically like you eat what you would normally eat. You know, I've got like a stovetop burner in there. Uh, so you can like cook spaghetti or, you know, rice or whatever the heck it is that you want to eat. I'm not much of a chef, so I eat out a lot, but um, the expenses, like, honestly, so that was actually one of the big reasons I wanted to do it too, was because I was traveling so much that if I was like international for you know, eight months out of the year, but I'm still paying, especially in LA, such high rent prices, I was paying like 1800 a month in rent mm -hmm. by being in a van for a year, I saved, you know, just over $20,000. So I could be like, okay, cool. I saved $20,000. Let me go ahead and fall out a little more in my van because I know that it's going to essentially like be a return on investment for me in that sense. So that part's so that nice. my question. Like I said, oh yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to ask you from an ROI perspective, I'm kind of scratching some numbers here. Let's say 50 grand all in, let's say rent in LA is three, four K you don't have rent. Obviously your girlfriend does, um, net net. You think you've come out from a return perspective, positive. It sounds like you have. Well, it's, it's so subjective, um, because there are so many different things to consider. Like I would say I, I came out on top tenfold mm -hmm. if, if not for saving on rent, but for buying the van converting it going back on bachelor in paradise and being the guy that lived in a van like that alone uh i think like got me you know it, it kind of gets you more brand deals with companies you want to work with it gets sure. you more instagram followers because people are like, talking about how weird it is and so uh, on that avenue alone i think it was absolutely worth it and i i i love it i still use it all the time to this day 
So. The underdog story sells. There's no doubt about it. You know, when Dean came into paradise and was like the hottest dude to ever walk the planet, people are like, F this guy. He comes in, long hair, mustache, living out of van. It was, oh, poor Dean. And boom, followers go up by 500,000 and your dude. rates triple. Boom, there it is. Leap in the net will appear. Dean carved a little niche out for himself, being this hippie guy in a van with a cringy mustache, and it separated him from a couple of the other bros. Everyone can do push-ups and look jacked, but he had his own thing going on. So very interesting for him to say, well, maybe the van didn't pay off itself on the X's and O's on the spreadsheet, but it juices up your equity. It juices up what you're worth as your brand and then a lot more money in return. So that's a really smart investment he made into his brand. All right, let's go to uh, nine minutes and 10 seconds. This is where they talk about Dean moving to Vegas, which of course, a lot of people from Los Angeles will move to Vegas because it's only a few hours away and you don't have state income tax, which if you're making a lot of money, uh, it pretty much makes the house pay for itself. From a from a dollar and cents perspective, I know Vegas is is a very um, solid place to live from a cost of living adjustment, right? Zero right. zero percent uh, state income tax. I believe property taxes are in the zero point five percent, which are the lowest in the entire country, and then sales tax are in like six point five percent. So cost of living adjustment, it's the place to be. Was that part of the reason that you are now? And, and are you building a home? Would you buy a home? Was that part of the reason? And what are you? What's the plan for that home? No, yeah, you nailed it right in the head. That was a huge part of nailed it. it I was right on the head. To my buddy back in like September, October last year. Uh, and he was like, yeah, like, I don't know why you guys are still living in LA. Like you should get a place like Nevada or Texas or something where you pay no income tax, um, mm -hmm. especially for, you know, people like you and me where our, all of our income is 1099. And so yep. income tax is like pretty, it's like a pretty big impact and influential sure. influencer thing on our, on what our, 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 what's going on. So we were like, yeah, like let's, let's look into it. And then, uh, Kaylin's grandparents and her aunt and uncle live in Las Vegas as well. And so we bought, we wanted to buy a house because renting, uh, sucks, I, I think. <laughs> You know, you throw so much money away renting throughout the course of a lifetime that eventually you're just like, why are we doing this? Like, let's start putting our mortgage towards the house rather than a rent payment being thrown away. Right. Um, and we were looking around LA and dude, in LA, it's like, we were looking at like houses that were like 1.5 million. Um, Good closet. Like fixer upper. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's small. It's a fixer upper. It's in a location that we don't really want to live in. And then we started talking about it and like mulling over our options. And we were like, well, we love Vegas. We go out there to visit your family all the time. Um, and we got a three bed, three bath for just under half a million dollars. Uh, and like the HOA fees are like basically non-existent out there. Um, so yeah, as far as now, in most cases, buying a home is better investment, obviously than renting, but like in Los Angeles, it's so expensive to buy a home. It's it might not be worth your money. Like we rent where we live in Los Angeles because we have to be here for Tasha's work. She works in fashion, which is primarily downtown LA. That's where she works. When the time comes though, with the income that we get from 1099 working of, you know, through YouTube and stand up comedy, you know, you need to kind of be a little, you need to be everywhere. You can work from home. So you have the option to live in, in States that, you know, have better deals for people to live in. I mean, that's the battle LA, uh, California has right now is that the taxes are so dang high. A lot of people are leaving here. Um, and that's, you know, that's a fight they're going to have to figure out before they uh, convince us to leave too. All right, let's go to 1245 here, but yeah, let me know, leave a comment. Let me know what you think of all this. It's fascinating stuff to me. But, uh, so yeah, I don't know. When I was in college, I went to the hospital. I was like, had some drunken night out, uh, got tased by the police because I'm an idiot. <laughs> I was very young. I was yeah. like 19 at the time. Uh, uh, and I was just like, you know, being a buffoon. I think I was like peeing on the street and the cop told me to stop peeing and I like, started running away and he tased me and I went to the hospital for that. And tased you while you uh, ran away? The hospital bill as a uh, uninsured college kid was like, it was like 10 grand, which really isn't that much. But for me at the time, it was like enough to me being like, I'm going to forget this ever happened. I'm not yeah. going to do anything. And I'm going to hopefully like the statute of limitations kicks in in seven years and it just gets, you know, wiped clean from my record. Sure enough, not the case. Um, I also had like, some <laughs> student loans that I defaulted on. So I came off of the bachelorette, probably like 25,000 bucks in debt, which again, isn't that much, but sure. it, it, it can be, it can be for sure. And uh, they were all delinquent accounts. And so my, you know, my credit scores were, you know, barely holding on above 500. Uh, and that's why when I first got my first couple like influencer checks or whatever, I think my very first check I ever got was like 10,000 bucks for uh, shilling some sort of mattress on Instagram, mm -hmm. right? And I was like, ten thousand dollars for a mattress for like for me to just post, <laughs> like, and I get a free mattress out of it. That's great. So I did a couple of those, and uh, immediately, I was like, the very first thing I did was paid off all of my debts to like you know the credit creditors, whatever it is. Sure. Um, 
And that was, I want to say like three or three years ago, three and a half years ago. And so even since then, like I'm still obviously paying the price for being so careless of it when I was younger, but it's definitely improved uh, pretty significantly. Now, this is a feel good story because obviously he went on the show. But how American is this? His two biggest debts are student loan debt and because he didn't have health care insurance because he got tased by the police. Listen, there's probably more to the tasing story, whatever, but this is a crime. And I know we have an international audience, Gabby's in Germany, people all over the world, they go, oh my gosh, the amount of debt people hold on to in the U.S. is, it is, it, they're, they're literally shackled down to the, to the, they're trying to shoot up with whatever goals and career and, and investments and no, you can't. Student loan debt, you can't do it. Medical debt, you can't do it. So you just got to hope your liver stays working. You got to hope you don't break your leg skiing. It's a crime, the world we live in. We need to open our eyes up to it and have that be changed. And, and, and maybe slowly it's happening. But ridiculous what's going on over there. That This guy, for two bad choices, one being to, sign, to, to, to saddle himself with student loan debt, or maybe you don't, you don't call that a bad choice, but the other one, getting, you know, getting drunk and tased by the cops, because of that, that's enough to cripple people. Luckily, he was able to spin it around by building equity in his brand on social media. But in the very, like, if he didn't live in this very specific uh, time in life where he's got the privilege to look good, have enough personality to go on a dating show, bump some Harrisons, you know, with somebody in a fantasy suite. Because of that, he's able to get a ten thousand dollar mattress. People in the comments, they love to go, oh, must be nice, this and that. Listen, these guys go through hell and back. They lose their image. They're in it for life. I mean, it's a real one way street, you know, to work in this influencer world they work in. I say you're worth every penny they're willing to give. It makes you realize how much money the people in advertising make, how much money that the TV networks make, because. All those commercials, that's where all the money used to be. I'm in Screen Actors Guild. I've been in it for 15 years. It used to be you do a commercial, you make 100 grand. That doesn't exist anymore. Now you get 10 grand for doing a mattress you know, on your Instagram story if you've got X amount of followers. All right, so let's go into the Bachelor in Paradise amount. By the way, 500 credit. Yikes. All right, so let's go to them discussing Bachelor in Paradise here. And again, don't leave a comment saying, oh, you're interrupting them, this and that. No, I'm absolutely interrupting them. They, uh, if You should go check out the full video if you want to check the ins and outs of all of this. It's really fascinating stuff. All right, so here they talk about Bachelor in Paradise, how much it pays, and they're negotiating with The Bachelor. At least I, I would believe that you weren't paid. Now, correct me if I'm wrong if you were, but I'm curious how did those contracts change from show to show, if you're willing to speak about it? And yeah. did you leverage it all, the fact that your notoriety and, and familiar face fame became greater for each show, therefore your price point would have or at least should have gone up? Right. No, in theory, that that's uh, absolutely right. So yes, so I did not get paid for Bachelorette. Uh, and that was a tricky time too, because Bachelorette, you know, you take a leave of absence from work, you're not getting paid for mm -hmm. the time that you're spending on the show, you still have your bills to pay when you're back home. Uh, and I got super lucky because my roommates at the time, when I left, even though I thought I was gonna be gone for like a couple days, a week tops, they started Airbnb, Airbnb my room out right away. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have to pay rent, fortunately, while I was gone. Um, and then I got back from the show and I was like struggling for cash, wasn't sure what I was gonna do, go back to work, but like obviously paychecks don't come right away. And then they were, they hit me up and they're like, Hey, do you want to do bachelor in paradise? This other show, it pays 400 bucks a day. Uh, you could be there for up to like 30 days, something like that. So I was like, Oh yeah, great. 40 bucks a, or three, 400 bucks a day, 30 days, $12,000. Okay. That's fantastic. Um, and then I start talking to some friends and they're like, well, you should get more money because you're kind of like the guy coming off the show. You're going to be like the most, you know, the, the, you're who they want most from your season to go to paradise minus like Peter, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was like, okay, cool. Pay me 800 bucks a day. Uh, and they were like, no, dude, go f yourself. Like, pay that much. we'll pay you 600. And I'm so certain, like I, at that point I was like out of principle. I just like wanted them to pay. It could have been $1 more, you know, but I had yeah. a principle. I wanted them to pay me more than they were offering everybody else. Just because sure. I thought I was hot for some reason. So they paid me <laughs> you 600, are hot six, 600 a day for 30 days. Uh, and I, I've heard other people, um, I can't remember who it was, but I've heard people getting upwards of like a thousand bucks a day for paradise. Um, but at the time, you know, like I said, I was struggling for cash because I took two months off of work, didn't see a single dollar for those two months. So uh, 600 bucks a day for 30 days, 18 grand, like I'm, I'm seeing that. And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. I would have done this for, you know, 100 bucks a day kind of thing. For sure. Um, go on that show. And, and I'm sure you've talked about this on, on the podcast before, but I, in my experience, at least most of the money that comes from going on any type of reality TV show is from the endorsements that follow afterwards. For sure. Yeah. Um, so we filmed Paradise. And then I get a call 
you know, I left Paradise single, obviously that whole, that whole season was pretty complicated for me. Uh, <laughs> but I got a call, I was like doing some, some events in Canada and the producers were like, Hey, we want you to be the bachelor for us next year. Uh, wow. Do you want to do it? And in the back of my head, I was like, no, I don't want to do it. Like I just went through the worst season of my life. Like, I don't even know. I don't want to get like married anytime soon, anything like that. Right. But I was like, well, it's too big of an opportunity to pass up. So I said, yes. I, and I think that they offer it to a couple of people every, every single year. Um, so I was like, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. Send the contract over. So they sent the contract over. It was for, uh, I think it was like 75 grand okay. uh, to be the bachelor for the season. Uh, and I'm sure you probably got something similar to that, right? Not, it was not price, but at least like, so ours was a hundred. So I, I, mine was a hundred. Nice. And then what they did is they gave three contracts and we were all buddies. So we just compared them. So me, Colton and Blake each had contracts for a hundred. And knowing that it was going to be between one of us three, there was actually a thought in my process. I might actually reverse negotiate this. Hmm. I might, because right. I, to your point, the 100K, I'll go get that in one deal after the, if I'm the bachelor. Sure. So I was thinking about like, I'll take it for 25. Uh, I'll take it for zero. I ended up not doing that. Uh, I don't think it would have yeah. mattered anyway. But to your question, I had to throw that in there. No, that's, I mean, that's a great point. I, I think that would have <laughs> been a great negotiating tactic. I talked to a couple other former bachelors and bachelorettes. And I was like, hey, like, just so you guys know, like I'm being considered for this opportunity. Uh, just so I can like, kind of price myself into it. What were you guys paid for your for your mm -hmm. uh, cooperation and all that kind of stuff? And um, 100 seems pretty good. Pretty good. I, I was pretty happy with 75. And again, like you just said, like anything would have like the, the money doesn't come from that contract. The money comes from after the fact. So yep. Um, yep. I said yes to it. And obviously they ended up, I think they went with Ari that year instead, which like forever grateful. Obviously it's kind of led me down this path that I am now with Kaylin. So and then uh, those other shows were like, I kind of like just stopped caring. Cause I was like, what's the difference between a thousand to $2,000 per show. If again, like I'm not going for the big paycheck that comes from. It. All right. So that's very interesting. Jason Tartik said he was offered a hundred K Colton Underwood and Blake Horstman offered a hundred K. That's what's fascinating. You know, there's no, there's no union for these people. I'm, you know, in screen actors guild, you get paid $900 for eight hours work and then overtime and then residuals. And then you can negotiate your salary when it goes higher up. I look, I just was pulling this off right here. I have two residuals from my, my uh, one liner I had in the movie Birdman. Here's one for a dollar 51. And here's one for two, uh, <laughs> two twenty seven. I mean, I might as well just rip them up, but there it is right there, folks. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if you can see that. That's it. That's it. That's it, folks. So this was obviously years ago, but you know, I still made several grand out of it. You know, and you get and, you, and it's uh, upward mobility. Um, but they don't have that. So like uh, four hundred dollars to do Bachelor in Paradise. That's it. Show's over. They're not getting residuals. When when with in the Screen Actors Guild, you get paid for your day rate. Then you get paid when it airs. You get paid when it airs on a airplane. HBO picks it up. Netflix. Every time there's a slice of the pie, you get a piece of that. With this non-union baloney culture, these Bachelor producers they make the money when it's syndicated they make the money when it goes to hulu and netflix and all these other places and these people they just get a couple hundred bucks so they're fighting over scraps so to you and i it might be cool oh dude it's 400 bucks to go hang on a beach with jorge and go drink a couple tecates absolutely but it's not about the money. It's about knowing that the higher ups, the people that own it all, they're the ones making the real money. So, in, and as they had mentioned, there's so many contestants to choose from. If they don't go with Dean, they'll just get the next jabroni. That's that's their mentality. So it's very interesting that like that you don't have too much leverage when it comes to how much they're willing to offer you. But as they said, you make the real money from endorsements at later on. So even if you're not making the money right away, uh, just being a part of the community and building your followers, that's where you build the equity to end up negotiating way more money in hindsight. So let me end this here with a quick, oh no, there's, there's uh, two more here. So let's go to Jason talking about his podcast network deal. So then some people who absolutely crush it. Then you see Joe Rogan, best podcast in, in the country, getting $500 million for fucking exclusive. 100 it's, it's million. A wild 100. Wild living, man. Well, it's a well, wild Two and a half percent, you said. Two and a half percent, like, ownership of the so, podcast? So, yeah, yeah. So the, the, Happy or the clickbait one with the bachelor group was the 100k a year, and then it was uh two and a half percent of ad revenue. Oh, nice, nice. So, obviously, like, suit right now, I get 70 percent of ad revenue, but I don't get the guarantee. But the reason right. I made that wasn't a financial decision, it was more of the other things that didn't make sense. Well, um, that's that's kind of my thing, too, because my podcast, uh, Help I Suck at Dating. If you're listening to this, feel free to chat, hell yeah, and check it out. <laughs> hell yeah. Uh, I don't necessarily love talking about dating topics once a week, you know, it's, but it's like at the end of the day, like I could talk about travel or photography once a week, I guess, but, uh, I'm, I, you know, I, it's still great at the end of the day, like have a platform to discuss things. 
like let's say there's something that came up that I really wanted to talk about with, with whoever wants to listen. It's nice to be able to have that platform to be able to do that. All right. So, so this was interesting how Jason said he was offered 100,000 a year or 2.5% ad revenue. I'm sure the hundred thousand was the minimum. And then if the ad revenue was higher, he'd get the, the difference in that. Uh, but now he gets 70% ad revenue. It's like me, like with my YouTube channel, I have no, I don't pay. I, no one else works for me, right? This is it. So if I have a deal and of course I don't have these crazy numbers, but if I have a deal, I have ownership over that. Joe Rogan was able to license his podcast to Spotify for $100 million because he owns it. He only has two or three employees. These idiots over here at like these large podcast networks like Wondery, they have like literally hundreds of employees. They're just over there pushing papers and, and counting things. Like you don't need all that when you're working, like the when you can strip down and not have some crazy network taking and taking and taking. Now, don't get me wrong. If you want to have an ad sales team, somebody that, they, you know, makes money uh, by presenting you the ads. Like I've always said this to my audience. If somebody came to me with a sponsorship opportunity, opportunity that I went with, I, I would totally work out a commission deal with you. If someone was like, all right, um, Movement Watches wants to pay you $10,000, but I'll need 20%. I'll say, gladly, I'll take $8,000. You'll get your 20% and you sold me the advert. You know, so there's always money to be made on the sales side of things. Salespeople will always make money because they're the ones, you know, money talks. They're, they're the, you know, that's why sales makes more than HR. No offense to HR. Sales, uh, that they make more. Or if you don't sell anything, you don't make anything. So salespeople you live or die by the sword. But it's interesting to find out that Jason Tartik was offered 100000 a year to do like maybe a podcast one day a week, turned it down, uh, mainly because it was sort of in conflict with Caitlin's, Caitlin Bristow's podcast, Off the off the Vine, because they kind of both talk about Bachelor Nation, so he decided he didn't want to do it because of that. But, you know, fascinating stuff. All right, last bit here. Let's go to the 43-minute mark. This is um, going to be Dean talking about his favorite deal. Jason asked Dean about his favorite brand partnership deal. Um, give Jason a follow on there. And if you do check out Jason's YouTube, leave a comment and say you heard it here first. Cause I want to, I would, I've been at, I've, I used to share my, how much money my YouTube brought in. Like a couple of years ago, I would share like, Oh, this recap video made $7. Oh, this one made $16 who donated this and that. And it's at the point now where like to protect my own interests, I don't share that because it's first of all, it's, it's volatile. So I don't have a trend yet, but I'm considering at the end of 20, 21 making a vlog video on my vlog channel how much money i made on my youtube channel a lot of creators make that a lot of creators make you know two four five hundred thousand dollars but there's plenty of creators that spend years making nothing so what you see as the final paycheck isn't necessarily the the thing you need to be focused on it's the work they took to get to the position where they had the equity that they could turn down brand deals ask for double and really negotiate their value there all right let's go to um uh, dean talking about his favorite um brand deal that he's worked on best deal so it could either be the biggest in dollar amount you don't have to say the brand or it's a brand that you just love doing it was a deal that you're just like so proud of yeah um i've been getting a couple nikon deals lately uh and every time they want to do a deal with me. I'm like, oh, you want to do a deal with me? Like, <laughs> because I love Nikon cameras. Like I got my start, like I started taking photography uh, lessons on a Nikon camera and I'm actually just doing one with them now. Um, they're paying me, I guess, yeah, we we're just talking about it. So they're paying me just under 30 grand. They sent me all of like the top of the line camera equipment that they have, which I would have paid for anyways. And that's it, folks. You can go watch the rest of this. I'll put a link below. The message is in the moral of the story is, Find a way to monetize doing what you love. If you want, if you're in a happy job and you want to stay there, fine. But find if you love camping, start a YouTube channel where you explore new camping gear. If you're someone who travels like Dean does with the van, clearly Nikon sees a fit there. Nikon's not, you know, trying to advertise with Blake Horstman, who's a DJ, but maybe Sony is who makes DJ equipment. Maybe they want to give Blake Horstman DJ equipment and then you know what I mean? So it's about getting a niche getting strong with your ability to influence by building your following, sharing information and, and, and information or entertainment. I try to do that on my channel, give you guys a little bit of news, but bring my own entertainment twist to it. And the world is yours and everything is in and everything that is in it. As Rudyard Kipling said, the world is yours. If you can build an audience that wants to follow you on your journey, it's only up to you to decide what that is. All right, folks, leave a comment. We've got a live stream at 4 p.m. Lots of content today. I appreciate y'all sticking around. Don't forget to like this video. Bye, everybody.